Well, guys, it's good. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. My family and I, we've been absent for a couple of weeks. We've been on the road doing a little bit of traveling. And we missed the church. I can tell you, we missed the church. As we were away, we were on vacation for two weeks, and it was a, a very special vacation for us as a family because it's something that we've wanted to do for the kids. We, we homeschool, in case you didn't know. And this year, we, we were learning about U.S. history from the starting of the nation to the Revolutionary War, so we decided, let's take our kids on this U.S. history tour to, to give them some information. And you know, I, I got to say, as we looked at history from the first permanent colony of Jamestown in Virginia through the Revolutionary War, what we saw is a common theme. Faith was woven into the fabric of the starting of our nation. You know, that first colony, Jamestown, you can go and visit it. They've dug up the ruins. There's one building that is standing. It's been rebuilt over the years, but it's the church. The first colony of Jamestown was a triangle, and in the middle of the colony, they built a church. That shows to you how important faith was for these individuals. And then as we went and looked at some other people and history, and we, we, we go through the Revolutionary War and look at George Washington, our first president, where he is buried, he's got this tomb and it's kind of this little building built over it in Mount Vernon on his estate. He's got a Bible verse over his tomb and his wife's tomb, John eleven twenty five 25 and 26, it says, Jesus said to her, so speaking to Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even if he dies. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? So think about it. Our first president has that written over his tomb. It's absolutely incredible. But we missed you guys. And... Coming back here, we're, we're jumping into this heavy, heavy topic. Things the Lord hates. And today it's a lying tongue. You can see it right there on the screen. And this is, this is a heavy topic. And I say that because, you know, it's easy for us to talk about God's love, God's grace, God's mercy. Those are exciting things for us to talk about. But the Bible also speaks of some, some difficult topics. And especially the one today, there's a lot written in Scripture about lying or God's feeling on lies. And this is also a topic that, as I look out into everybody here, everybody has told a lie. And some maybe even in the last week or maybe even today. It's a heavy topic, and the Bible says a lot about it, but before I jump into it, open Proverbs 16 through 19. Let's look at these scripture verses that we're going to be unpacking over these next weeks. If you guys can pop that up on the screen. There are six things the Lord hates, seven that are abomination to him. Haughty eyes, with which Dan covered with you guys last week. A lying tongue, which we'll look at this week. Hands that shed innocent blood, which you guessed it we'll look at next week. A heart that devises wicked plans, feet that run rapidly to evil, a false witness who declares lies, and one who spreads strife among the brothers. As we go through each of these topics, have an open heart. If it's something that you're struggling with, my prayer is that the Holy Spirit will bring conviction. And when there is conviction that leads us to repentance, and repentance is a good thing, Repentance is a good thing because what repentance does is it helps us overcome that sin that we're struggling with in our lives. So the first topic we covered was haughty eyes. Brother Dan, thank you. Today's topic is a lying tongue. 
Are all lies the same? Do all lies have the same weight? You can put a spectrum. You got stretching the truth, which is, for example, you went on vacation for, for a week, maybe you had two really bad days of rain. You come back, somebody asks, hey, how was the weather on vacation? You say, oh, it was great. Because you're, you're right, it was overall good. There were a couple of bad days, but you kind of stretched the truth just a little bit to just complete falsehood, making something completely up. Like, for example, yeah, I went to Greece for vacation. Really, you went down to Hocking Hills. So people can say there's kind of a spectrum. Are all lies the same? We're going to answer that. And as we go in this message, we're going to look at four areas. What does the Bible say about lying and the nature of God? That's important for us to understand what God's nature is because knowing and understanding God's nature helps us to overcome these challenges if we're experiencing them. We're also going to look at why people lie. Because in, all, in our culture, just turn on your TV and all you hear is lies. We're going to look at why we as Christians should strive for truth. And then we'll end with, where do we get our help if we're struggling with lies, with lying in our life? But let's start with the Bible. And when I want to start at John 8, 44. We're going to go right to the heart of lies. John 8, chapter 8, verse 44. This is Jesus speaking of, of, of Satan. He describes him as, he was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to truth. So Satan was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to truth. For there is no truth in him, no truth in Satan. When he lies, he lies, for he is a liar and the father of lies. Satan is a liar and he is the father of lies and lies are his native language. When we think about this, this heavy topic of a lying tongue, that, that God hates a lying tongue, we look to where the lies come from. And the Bible is clear that Satan is the father of lies. He's the great deceiver. And his desire is for people to live a life of deception just like he is. He goes and sell his goods and services to people as being, hey, this is good for you. This is fun. But knowing that he's the great deceiver and the father of lies should tell us what the outcome of that is going to be. The Bible tells us that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. That's Romans 3.23. And then in Ecclesiastes 7.20, there is no righteous man on earth who continually does good and who never sins. And the reason I tell you that is because this is a heavy topic. And I, I ask you to stay with me because we're going to look at scripture and some of it may be very convicting. But many people lie and everybody has told a lie. There is a way out but I want you to know the scripture tells us that all have sinned and there's not a single person that continually does good. And I don't tell you that because I want you to feel good about the lies that you've told, but I tell you that because it's a reality. It's a reality in human nature because we have sinful nature inside of us. And all have sinned. So now I want to look at several passages of scripture that speak about lies. And these are straight and direct passages. There's no sugarcoating where God stands when it comes to the topic of lying. Psalm 101 verse 7. One who practices deceit shall not dwell within my house. That's the word of God. That's not me saying this. 
One who speaks lies shall not maintain his position before me. One who practices deceit shall not dwell within my house. One who speaks lies shall not maintain his position before me. And that's a psalm of David that David himself wrote. And David was an individual who had deceit in his life. Is saying this. And then Proverbs 19.22, listen to this and hear this. What is, a, what is desirable in a person is his kindness. Can you say amen to that? We love kind people. And the second part of Proverbs 19.22 says, and it is better to be a poor person than a liar. It is better to have nothing and be honest. Numbers 23, 19 speaks specifically of the nature of God. Numbers 23, 19. God is not a man that he would lie, nor a son of man that he would change his mind. Has he said or will he not do it? And will he not do it? Or has he spoken and will he not make good? God is not a man that he would lie. You know what? There's two, two things that that implies. First, man lies. And the second thing, in, in the nature of God, there is no lies. God cannot lie. And I, I'm so grateful for that second part because what that tells me is that everything that God says, he will fulfill. Everything that God says he will do, he will do. In addition to that, when God says that when you believe in his son Jesus, you will be saved, you can believe in his son Jesus and know that you will be saved. But it also implies that man lies. In Titus chapter 1, verses 1 and 2, the opening of this letter it says, Paul, a bondservant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ for the faith of those chosen of God and the knowledge of the truth, which is according to godliness and the hope of eternal life, which God, who cannot lie, promised long ages ago. Can you say amen to standing on God's promises? I am so glad that what God has said in his word we can stand and believe his truth because he cannot lie. Then we continue. John chapter 14, verse 6. Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So God cannot lie, and in the Trinity we see that nature extended to Jesus, who the Bible tells us is the truth. Jesus is the truth. And then John 8.31, and this is all going to come full circle, and then we're going to unpack this. John 8.31, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. You see, the Bible tells us that Jesus is the truth, and then it says the truth will set you free. So for me, what that implies is that as I grow closer to Jesus, who is the truth, as you grow closer to Jesus, who is the truth, the further you get from lies. So if you're sitting here today and you're struggling with this in your own life, the way to get free is to grow closer to the truth, who is Jesus. Because he is the way, the truth, and the life. And the Bible tells us, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Praise God. Praise God for that. Those are some heavy verses, right? Can somebody say those were some direct verses about God's feeling about lies? Those aren't all the verses that, that talk about God's feeling, his thoughts on lying. 
A lie is not telling the truth. It's fabrication. It's deceit. And I ask the question, is there a difference in lies, whether I just stretch the truth a little bit or whether I completely make something up? And as I look at the word of God, the answer in the word of God is a lie is a lie. Whether you stretch the truth a little bit or whether you made something up completely. And as I look at the word of God, I look at the Bible, there are examples of people lying in the Bible, which shows human nature. You look at Cain, who killed Abel. After Cain killed Abel, God goes looking, and he comes to Cain, and he says, where is your brother? And what does Cain say? Am I my brother's keeper? He knew exactly where Abel was, and so did God. And so he didn't speak the truth in that moment. And then there's Abraham, who didn't speak the truth two times. The the father of Israel. Abraham lied about his wife, Sarah. And he did so because he was afraid for his own life when he went to Egypt And Pharaoh saw Sarah, a beautiful woman. He said, oh, who's that? Oh, that's my sister. And what did Pharaoh do? He took her for himself. And the wrath of God fell upon Pharaoh's household. And he went back to Abraham. He said, why did you deceive me? And the same thing happened a second time. And then his son Isaac spoke a lie. And Jacob deceived his father. Remember when he went and put on the skin to get the blessing? His father asked him, are you my son Esau? And then there was Samson and Delilah. Delilah was asking, where's your strength come from? Samson misspoke once, or didn't tell the truth once, a second time. And then there's the example of Ananias and Sapphira. They went and sold their piece of land. And they came to the apostles. They brought the the, the funds and they said, is this the amount you sold it for? And unfortunately, they lied to the Holy Spirit. The reason I share this with you is not to justify lying or not to justify stretching the truth or not to justify in any situation not being honest but to show you that there is a a human nature in all of us. And as I read Proverbs 16 through 19, and I, I read through those seven items, I think, Lord, many of those I've done. But the Bible gives us a way out of those. And unfortunately, some people, they struggle with some of those their entire lives. They don't overcome those. And this is one specifically that some people struggle their their entire lives. But I want to encourage you that there is a way out. I want to encourage you that what you may have said yesterday or what you may have said a week ago or a year ago doesn't define your future. It's good for us to look in the word of God and understand the nature of God. Yes, he is a loving God. Yes, he is a just God. And yes, he is a God of wrath. And there are just some things that he doesn't like. But in everything that he doesn't like, he gives us a way out. And that's what I want to look with you. I wanted to establish that, you know what, we're, we're human beings. I don't want you to sit there thinking, you know what, I'm the only one. Oh gosh, I'm such a sinner, I'm the only one. If you looked around, there are a lot of people who've struggled with this and many who still continue to struggle. I think back to the Holocaust. There were Christian people. If you've ever been to the Holocaust Museum in Washington, D.C., there are Christian people. Because it tells us, you read the stories, these Christian people hid Jewish families, whether it was in their barns or 
in their floorboards and the Germans came by and they said, no, we don't, we don't know anybody. So they, they, they told a straight out lie. And I just thought to myself, like, if I was living in that time, first of all, I hope I, I, w- I would be strong enough to hide people. Would I lie in that moment? And the answer is yes, I would. I would have done the same thing. I would have said, no, I, there's nobody here. But that doesn't justify it. God will not be mocked. That would still require a conversation between me and the Lord. Why do people lie? Why is it in human nature to lie? There was a study done. And many of these things, you're probably like, yeah, duh, that makes sense. There's a study done by psychology today about why people lie. And here are some of the reasons. To hide shame or embarrassment. For example, you did really terrible on a test. How'd you do? Oh, I did, did okay. And you know you got an F. To belong, social acceptance. Young people lie to their friends to feel like they're a part of something. Somebody's bragging about driving 100 miles an hour and another young person says, yeah. Or they look over and say, hey, have you done that? You're like, If I say no, I'm going to look like I'm not cool. So yeah, I've done that too. You know you didn't. For social acceptance, people lie to avoid conflict. I see this in marriages. And I see this between children and parents. And it's very damaging. A wife lies to her husband to keep from getting scolded. Maybe you went shopping and you didn't want your husband to know you just bought shoes for 350 bucks. <laughs> I see some smiles there. Or a child. Hey, where were you on Friday night? I was at church and you know you weren't at church. You do that to avoid conflict, to avoid punishment. Anybody been pulled over before? Anybody by a police officer? And they know exactly how fast you were going. They have a radar. They walk up to your window. They knock on your door. They say, hey, so how fast were you going? Oh, the speed limit was 60. Oh, maybe 65 miles an hour. And you know you were going 85 miles an hour. And so does he. People lie to avoid punishment. To gain in business, people lie and profit from lying to gain in business. For example, I've heard this. People who have trucking companies, you go to your customer, you say, hey, you pay me this amount, the whole truck is yours, even though they only filled it halfway. And in your mind, you're thinking, okay, along the way, where am I gonna pick up some more to fill it up? Even though you just told the customer, you bought out my whole truck for the sake of gain, people lie. People lie to cover for others. So they don't get in trouble. The intention seems like a good one, but it's the wrong way of doing it. Those are just some of the reasons that people lie. And when we look at scripture and we look at, we look at God, in him there are no lies. Jesus is the truth. And in our human nature, our sinful nature, it's something that we struggle with. I made a comment earlier that The closer we get to Jesus, the fewer lies will come out of our mouths and the closer we can get to honesty. I really meant that. I can tell you that from my own life. As you grow closer to Jesus and you invite the Holy Spirit to bring conviction, when you tell a lie, you know immediately that was not the truth and you'll go back and correct that. But if you're over here, and you're still kind of far from Jesus, those lies are going to continue. For any of those reasons that that we had just covered, Matthew 5.37 says, let your yes be yes and your no be no. Remember that. Let your yes be yes and your no be no. If somebody asks you a question, Remember this verse. 
and you and you're about to say something that's not the truth, it's better to say, sorry, I can't answer that. Let your yes be yes and your no be no. And there's a reason for that as you look through scripture, lies are damaging. I look at Ananias and Sapphira, that's an extreme example. They lied and they fell dead instantly. But then also Abraham, he lied And it brought judgment on the house of Pharaoh. Lies erode trust. When I look at the Bible, I want to have something that I can put my trust in. And I'm so grateful that as I look at the word of God, I can put my trust in God. Because in him there are no lies. But you think about individuals. When an individual lies, an individual erodes trust. If you're a parent, raise your hand. Just an honest question to you. If your child lies to you, does that erode your trust? Does that damage your trust in your child? No? Not your children. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, sister. Yeah. Oh, yeah. If your child lies, does that cause you to lose trust in them? Yes. Okay. I was going to say, wow, we got, we got a great example here. But yes, it, and if your child lies time and time again, does that erode your trust? We want to trust our children. We want to be able to say, hey, I, I, when they tell me they're, they're going to be at this place at this time, I know that that's exactly where they are. And the same is true between marriages when a husband and a wife, they lie to each other and that lie comes out and they will. It erodes the trust in that marriage. When you lie at work and your employer finds out, it puts you in a very difficult position, right? I've heard stories, people say, and you, you see these news articles come up Somebody took a sick day, they went to the beach and somebody saw them there and they got fired for that. Like, hey, I'm sick. But no, you're not. You're at the beach. You just wanted a day off. When you lie to your friend, it damages that relationship. Telling lies in and of themselves are damaging for relationship. And that's why as you look at scripture and you just think about the concept of lying. Lying is harmful to relationships And as a Christian, this is where I want us to think about our, our, ourselves as believers. As a Christian, when we lie and somebody finds out, it's damaging to our witness. And we tell people, you can trust the Lord. You can believe what he says. We preach it. And then we lie to them in their face and they see that. It damages our witness. It damages the gospel that we preach. And for some people, that may be all they need to be pushed away from faith for the rest of their lives. Remember that Satan is the father of lies and he wants us to lie. Is there a time that it's okay to lie? And based on what I see in scripture, no. But would I lie to Germans if they're looking for people that I'm hiding? Yes. How do you reconcile that? God will not be mocked. And God stands true to his word. I will need a conversation with the Lord. I will need a time of repentance and confession And here's where, this is a difficult topic, but at the same time, I'm so assured in the nature of God that I know that he says, when I confess my sins, he will forgive. When I repent and turn away, he will remember no more. This is where I'm rest assured in knowing that I have hope. 
And that hope comes through what Jesus did on the cross. Things the Lord hates, a lying tongue. Everybody in this room has told a lie. And some maybe even yesterday. But the Lord loves you so much that he wants to help you to overcome what Satan wants you to excel in. Because that's his natural, that's his native language. The first point that I made is the further you are from Christ, the more lies you're going to tell. The closer you get to Christ, the fewer lies you will tell. And it is possible to get to a point in our life where we live a life of honesty. It is possible. But the only way to get there is to grow closer to Christ. How do you grow closer to Christ? Well, take a look at your life. Take a look at what you did this last week. Take a look at the way you spent your time this last week. Did you open the word? Did you pray? Did you spend time with the Lord? The way to get closer to Jesus, who is the truth, is to spend time with Jesus, who is the truth. And all of us can do that. It's making it a priority. So there is a way to move away from that. And the second point I want to make is we can seek forgiveness. And I'm so grateful that the Lord gives us this way out. If you look back and you've struggled with this, there is a way out. And that's to say, I am sorry, Lord. Lord, I am sorry. I lied yesterday. Lord, I lied last week. Lord, I continue to lie to X, Y, and Z. He gives us a way out. And when you say, I'm sorry, invite the Holy Spirit, do this, use these words, because I can tell you from my life, the Holy Spirit will bring instant conviction. When you stretch the truth, you're still speaking a lie. When I stretch the truth, I'm still speaking a lie. But when I invite the Holy Spirit to say, Holy Spirit, when I lie, when I misspeak the truth, bring that conviction, because I want to be a person of honesty, a person of integrity. The Holy Spirit will bring that conviction. And boy, I got to tell you, that conviction hurts. That conviction is powerful. But that conviction is necessary for us to then go back and correct that lie. Because God hates a lying tongue. God hates a lying tongue. I'm going to ask you to stand up. And we're going to have some time of personal prayer. I wish I had a different topic to preach to you guys on. (laughs) I wish I had drawn the longer straw, not the shorter straw. But guys, what I read to you is from scripture. It's not me. We all know just by human nature that it's bad to lie. It's, It's damaging. But the Bible also speaks of it. And it speaks of where God stands and what his position is with lying. I want you to bow your head and just take some time, just you and the Lord. You and the Lord speaking to the Lord. If you need to confess for the lies that you've told, have that conversation with the Lord. If you told a lie this morning, maybe to your child or your spouse or child, maybe you told your parent a lie or to a friend or this past weekend or this week or the last month, this is your opportunity to say, Lord, I see where you stand on this in your word, and I'm sorry. Please help me to overcome this in my life. Please help me to grow closer to you who are the truth so that I can move further and further away from the language of Satan. Have this conversation with the Lord right now. My desire is for us to be a people of honesty, to be known for being people of honesty. Because when we present our witness and we tell them, you can believe, you can trust, not only are we speaking words, but our lives are reflecting the same thing because that's how we're living our lives. a conversation with the Lord right now. 
I'm going to be still and quiet for a couple of minutes. This is our opportunity to say, Lord, I'm sorry. anybody here who wants to give their life to the Lord, I want to give you that opportunity. Now, we are a family of believers, and we believe in the gospel, and I'm grateful that we can stand on the promises that God has given us and the truth. He gave his son for each one of us, and if you have not made a commitment to follow Jesus and you want it today, I invite you to come forward, and we'll celebrate that decision with you. We want to give it every opportunity for that. But Lord, I thank you, Father, for your word. I thank you, Lord, that we can stand on the promises of your word, Lord. I thank you that as we open your word and we read the words written on the pages, that is you speaking, Lord. We believe that it is inspired by you, Father, and I'm so grateful that in you there are no lies. You cannot lie. 
So when you tell us to pray for healing and you will heal, we can stand on that truth. When you tell us that you'll separate our sin as far as the east is from the west, you truly do that. I thank you for that, Lord. Heavenly Father, my desire for each one of us is that we are people of integrity, people of honesty, people that reflect your son Jesus, the truth well to society. Help us, Lord Jesus. And Holy Spirit, I invite you to bring conviction into each one of our hearts. If we do stretch the truth, even just a little bit, or we tell a flat out lie, Holy Spirit, bring conviction immediately so that we cannot and do not allow that to fester in our lives. Father, help us to have a witness that is solid, a witness that is true, so that we can reflect your son Jesus to the people around us. And when they see our lives, desire the same thing. If there are people here struggling, Father, with habitual lying, help them to overcome in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father, for this this heavy topic, this difficult topic. But I thank you that your word is clear on it, Lord, and you stand clear on it, that you are a God of truth. I thank you, Lord. Father, I pray for your blessing over every individual that is here. Help us, Father, to be a bright light that shines here in Broadview Heights, Ohio, that is a beacon in this community, Lord. I thank you, Father. Lord, bless the rest of this series that we're going down, Father. There are some more heavy topics there, heavy conversations that we're going to have. But I thank you, Lord, that in each one of those, you give us a way out. That you desire to see us succeed in our faith. You desire to see us grow in our faith. Because we are your children. And you love us deeply, Lord. I thank you. And I pray all this in the precious and mighty and holy name of Jesus. Amen.